So recently, one of my videos went mega viral, over 8 million views. We basically microscoped the end of a syringe needle, both new and used after we tried it on an orange. Now I thought there's loads more stuff we can try. So today, let's microscope stuff again. So as I mentioned, after the success of our first microscope video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some more stuff today. So we've got some steaks, some expensive cheap ones, we've got diamonds, we've got a real diamond versus a cubic zirconium. Uh, we've even got some razors, we're going to have a look at can you reuse a razor blade, what does the actual blade look like after being used. Uh, I think this is going to be really interesting results. And finally we're going to have a look at some screws as well, new versus used. So we're going to have, a, we've got a quite a nice little selection of stuff today. I think we're going to get started with the razor and we're going to shave a little bit of our arm and see what that looks like. So let's do that. So for our first test today, what we're going to do is have a look at the difference between a new and a used razor. Now these are disposable razors, so technically you're meant to throw them away after each use unfortunately. That's why it's more recommended to get something that you can use multiple times. But what we want to do is actually see what damage is done to the blade after one use. We'll shave a little bit of our arm and we'll see the difference under the microscope, so it should be really interesting. So that being said, let's get started. We've got to shave a little patch off our arm to get our used blade. Very cool. So let's load up the arm with some shaving cream. There we go. Right, let's shade the arm now. Very sharp blade, you can see it's pulling loads of hairs already. Okay. We'll come back and we'll go a few more passovers. So you can see it's really nice and used. We've got loads of hairs in there. It's definitely gonna have an effect on the blades. Let's throw that under the microscope and have a proper look at it now. So this is our new razor blade under the microscope. You can see, we can see the machine lines right up until that sort of black line on the edge there. Now that is an extremely sharp edge. It's perfectly machined to make as sharp as possible an edge to cut the hairs. There is some water droplets or oil droplets or lubricant or something. I guess that's to help shaving. If you don't have shaving cream, uh, it will still work potentially as a dry razor, but I'm not sure. If you know a little bit more about that, let me know in the comments. Let's zoom in a little bit further and have a look closer. So now we're in a little bit closer, you can see what I mean, where the lines, the machine lines, all those lines, uh, horizontal lines, come to a complete stop and there's just a black line. Now that's not a shadow, that's just a perfectly machined edge, which is essentially a mirror. Uh, it's extremely sharp and those oil slash water slash lubricant droplets you can see on the edge of our blade there, I'm not sure what those are. But yeah, very, very sharp. Now let's compare this to our used razor. So here we have our used blade. You can see it actually doesn't look too bad from here. Now remember, we didn't use this too many times, um, so maybe it looks all right. So we hold it at this angle, you can really start to see where our edge has been sort of worn in from cutting our hairs. And then also we dried this on a towel. So you've got to remember that that drying action on a towel uh, is also going to damage the edge, even though we're going the opposite way to sort of remove the hairs and dry, dry it off. Um, let's zoom in a bit more and see what that looks like. So now we can really start to see the damage to that edge. Uh, yeah, that's definitely no longer going to be anywhere near as sharp as it was originally. This still will cut. This still will shave. This still will cut you. It, it, it's very, very, very sharp. I'm not exactly sure what the recommended is for this, but certainly bear in mind that you don't want to be using this too many times, uh, especially the disposable ones. Obviously, you can get a few shaves out of non-disposable razors, but even better, clippers if you can, uh, if you can afford those. So, yeah, very cool. So we got some interesting results from our razors. Up next, what we're going to do is have a look at the screw head here. Um, we'll use this impact driver, screw it into a block of wood and compare a used one versus a new one to understand why we see that slippage and sort of what damage that does, exactly how much. So let's do that now and we'll screw it into the wood first. So we've got a screw here. Let's pop this in. Right. We've just drilled into the table, which is great. Let's take it out. Okay, woo, hot. So now we've got a used screw. I can see it's already slightly damaged from when we slipped as it sort of went in a funny angle. Obviously it's better to drill a pilot hole. Um, but yeah, it's just a more real world case scenario. Uh, let's compare this now with our new screw under microscope. So this is the top of the unused screw. You can see all the edges are perfect. Um, there's no damage whatsoever. Remember, this is a PZ bit, so it's got that sort of line going through because it's more of a, it's not an exact cross, it's actually more of a star shaped. So let's see in the middle, because down at the bottom there, I think it's going to be quite important. If we just focus. Okay, so you can see the divot at the bottom is also untouched, perfect, not a single change or anything to it. Right, now we've seen this and we know what the standard is, let's look at our used one. 
So this is a used screw. You can see on the same point as the other one, if I just move it slightly so you can see where we are, that's the sort of, that's one of the crosses there. Uh, and you can see it's completely chewed the edge. Now I think even if we didn't have slippage, some this would occur because of the force applied to it. I just don't think it would be to the same extent. Let's see at the bottom if it looks any different. So we just have to find it there. So what's interesting actually, can you see all those filings in there? It's got all the filings from the when, from the top. Obviously, as the top's sort of been worn in, it's put all the filings down at the bottom. And I think that then creates almost like a lubricant that furthers the problem and carries on the slipping. But you can see, it's very cool. You can see just the, the sort of tiny bits of metal that have accrued at the bottom. Very interesting. And we can see they've come from up here. If I just go back to the top, you can see there's probably the worst that's where they've come from. Yeah, where it's just chewed the edge of the screw. And this is exactly why uh, the slipping occurs. Because once it starts moving freely and starts almost sanding the sides of our screw, and it's no longer fit in place properly, uh, it just starts chewing the edges. And again, then you have the, the sort of the lock you get from having a perfect fitting shape is completely lost and it just becomes a, becomes a bit of a mess. So very interesting, very cool. So up next, we're gonna have a look at the difference between these pieces of meat here. Now they're both the same cut of meat, but the price difference is massive. So it's about 10 pounds here, and it was about two pounds something here, I believe. Um, and I wanna see if under microscope, can you actually notice the difference? I suspect there'll be quite a bit of difference between the fat and the meat on each one. But again, we'll have to see under microscope. So let's prepare our little slides now. So this is our expensive cut of meat here. Let's just get out of the packet. Just wanna try and get really thin I wonder what the best, the sort of grain of the meat, if you like, seems to be running this way. So I kind of want to try to match that so it doesn't break apart when we're cutting it. Maybe this, this knife isn't sharp enough. Right. So I think, can we get a good enough sample from that? Might need to try and go a bit thinner. You can see almost there's a sort of grain to the meat. I'll just repeat the same on the cheap and we'll jump to the microscope now. So this is the cut on our cheaper meat. Um, now I think all those lines and stuff are obviously sort of veins that will be connecting muscle tissue. And maybe that sort of yellowy, sort of whitey area is fat or it's a bubble, it, one of the two. It might be a bubble trapped under there. But we can see all the sort of veins running through it. Now I wonder how different this will look compared to the expensive one. Let's just zoom in a bit further first before we move to the expensive. Okay, there we are. Let's find a bit of a better position here. Okay, so not much information at the minute. So I think these lines, can you see those sort of diagonal running lines? Now I believe that's sort of muscle tissue. Um, I'm not so sure, It looks this looks lean. This meat looks very lean if I'm being honest. It looks like there's a lot of muscle tissue uh, and not a huge amount of fat running through it. So I presume this was a very lean cow. Um, that's as much information as I can get so far. Let's compare it with the expensive one and actually see if there's any difference. So straight away what I notice is this is much, much fattier than meat. You've got these fat lines running through it. Uh, what you can see that grayed out area is actually the fatty area. What we saw in the cheap was just an air bubble I double checked, but we can see, let's move it away slightly so you can see this is the fat that's running through and then the actual muscle tissue is the sort of more yellowy area above. So I have to say, the, the muscle fibers look like they are much longer. Maybe it's just the way that this is cut, but the muscle fibers seem much longer uh, and, and generally just, I would say, more healthy. I always find it so interesting seeing things we take for granted every day at this sort of level. It is very cool. For our final experiment today, what we're going to do is have a look at the difference between these two diamonds. One of these is a cubic zirconia and the other one's a real diamond. This costs £100, this only costs £10. Now I wonder if there'll be much difference under the microscope. I know for a fact that these cubic zirconias are very, very close to the real diamonds, so it'll be interesting to see if we see any differences. So let's throw that on the microscope and we'll have a quick look. So with our real diamond still being in the packet, you can see that there's quite a big difference in color between our cubic zirconia. I would say our cubic zirconia is a fair bit brighter and shinier than our diamond is. But uh, let's have a look under microscope. So another quick test I just wanted to show you before we move into the magnification was when we heat these up, I believe the diamond should take a little bit longer than the cubic zirconia to heat up and will be able to hold its heat much longer than the cubic zirconia. So I just wanna show you that quickly now. So let's heat these up. 
So it's just using a blowtorch here, and we'll just get these up to temperature. So we can see the CZ is already bright red, the diamond just going now. So diamonds are extremely good conductors of heat and you'll see it will hold on to the heat much longer than the CZ. So let's move that. So our diamond should stay hotter for longer. So you can see it's staying red. It's, it, it stayed. What you saw there was our diamond stayed much hotter longer than our CZ. Our CZ already went to back to, uh, to, to not being red hot much, much faster. So really interesting stuff. They've got amazing properties, diamonds. Let's move on to the microscope test. So this is our cubic zirconia here. You can see it's got an absolutely almost 100% clarity all the way through. Uh, and that is again going to help massively with the brightness of it. Ignore the bit of dirt and whatever I've got on the surface of it. Uh, I haven't got a good way to clean that at the moment. But you can see the cuts are very nice. It's very, very sharp edges and very, very bright. Uh, again, one of the trademarks of cubic zirconia, CZ, is that it's an extremely bright gemstone. Uh, and this, again, £10 for this, which is not bad, to be honest, um, compared to the £100 for the same size stone you get for real diamond. Yeah, so let's move on to the real diamond and we'll see what we get with that. So this is our real diamond. You can see the clarity is far, far less than our uh, cubic zirconia. And uh, obviously we have lots of occlusions in ours. Let me know if, uh, if £100 for this diamond was worth it. If you know anything about diamonds, let me know if, uh, if £100 was worth it for this diamond. You can see, if we get the light correct, look at all those occlusions in there. It's not particularly clean as a diamond, um, but I suspect that's part of probably what you're paying for, right? Is the sort of more mineral quality of it. Um, Again, what's interesting is this is the diamonds are slightly colder to the touch than cubic zirconia. All those natural formations. What's so interesting is when this was formed, so this was formed, I guess, millions of years ago. Um, and as it formed, all these occlusions, I guess, are air pockets or different minerals that got caught in the diamond. You know, you've got to remember, this is literally mined out of the earth up the millions of years. It's kind of mind blowing. So we can see all of those there. But yeah, very cool. So we saw some interesting results from that today. I was actually quite surprised how damaged the razor was after a couple of uses. Just goes to show you don't want to be taking that for granted, especially when it comes to things like infections you can get if you nick yourself and you put a bit of bacteria in, in your skin there. It's going to be not very good at all. Uh, yeah, just get an electric razor if you know you're going to be shaving a lot and you can afford it. It was also interesting to see the difference in diamonds. Again, remember it was 10 times the price between the CZ and the diamonds. So, you know, you're going to have to think about these things when you're buying diamonds and stuff like that. If you have any ideas around things you want microscoped or other tests, make sure you leave them in the comments. I do read through them all uh, and I'll try and respond to as many as I can. And I've seen some amazing stuff already. So hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and a comment if you did. Subscribe if you want more content like this. Hope to see you next time. Very cool.